a pleasant day to the young and enthusiastic learners. I am Dr. Shobha Edward, Principal, Associate Professor and Head of the Department of Corporate Secretaryship, KCS Kasi Nada College of Arts and Science. Now, I shall be handling statistics for you. Now, moving on to the introduction to statistics. So, as I introduce you, a hearty welcome into this team. Statistics. What is statistics? Statistics is defined as the collection, presentation, analysis and interpretation of numerical data. What is collection of data? Data collection is a process of gathering and measuring information on variables of interest in an established systematic fashion that enables one to answer research questions, test hypotheses, and evaluate outcomes. So for the purpose of statistical analysis, we will be collecting data. Now, when we go on to the characteristics of statistics, statistics can be characterized in two types. Statistics as a data, statistics as a method. Statistics as a data first. So, as a data, it means statistics is dealing with numbers. So, it is an aggregate of facts. It is affected by multiplicity of causes. It is numerically expressed, enumerated or estimated and it should be collected with reasonable accuracy and it should be done in a systematic manner. When we speak about statistics as a method, so, as a method, it is the collection, presentation, analysis, interpretation of data. So, all these five stages put together is statistics as a method. So, the five stages from the definition itself goes as follows. Collection of data, organization of data, presenting data, analyzing the data and interpreting the data. So, we will first collect data. We will organize it as we need it and then we will present it, then analyze and from our analysis we will be interpreting the data. Now going on to the functions of statistics, it simplifies complexity, it is definite, it helps to compare, it enlarges individual experience, it formulates and tests hypothesis, it helps in testing the laws of science, it foresees the future course, it studies relationship and it helps government and policy formulation. The scope for the importance of statistics. Statistics is used in varied fields. Statistics and the state. Statistics and economics. Marketing. Production. Finance. Banking. Investment. Purchase. Accounting. Control. Credit. Personal. Research and development. Statistics also plays its role in physical sciences and natural sciences. Now to list out the uses of statistics, it helps in providing a better understanding and exact description of a phenomena of data. Statistics helps in proper and efficient planning of a statistical inquiry in any field of study. Statistics helps in collecting an appropriate quantitative data. Statistics helps in presenting complex data in a suitable tabular, diagrammatic and graphic form for an easy and clear, comprehensive understanding of data. Statistics helps in understanding the nature and pattern of variability of quantitative data. Statistics helps in drawing valid inference from our data which is tested and interpreted. Limitations of statistics, it does not deal with individual data. It deals with only quantitative data and qualitative data is not dealt with. It may lead to wrong conclusion in the absence of details and statistical laws are true only on an average. It does not reveal the entire story and it should be uniform and homogeneous and statistics is likely to be misused. Now going on to the collection of data, we were speaking about the data to be collected for analysis and interpretation. 
So while collecting, we will have primary data and secondary data. Primary data is nothing but the first hand information where you go and collect the data. Secondary data is already collected by somebody and you are going to reuse it. So that is secondary data. So again, a recap. Primary data is original in character and are generated by the government, individuals, institutions and research bodies. Secondary data are not originally collected but which is already published or unpublished sources are there and it is used, reused again as secondary data. So this is primary and secondary data. Now we have the methods of collecting primary data. It can be a direct personal interview, indirect oral interview, information from correspondence, mailed questionnaires and the schedule. Direct personal interview has some merits as well as some limitations. So this is the first hand and original information that is collected where you directly go and interview a person and collect data. So the merits response is very encouraging and people are willing to give information. It's more accurate and it's possible to collect additional supplementary information and the language of the communicator can be adjusted to the person who is being interviewed and misinterpretation is avoided. The limitation is very costly because you have to go and visit every interviewer and it, personal bias is there. Interviewers have to be trained and supervised and it requires more time. Now for the direct personal interview it is suitable for intensive survey you can also use telephone interviews and that is less expensive. But the defects, everyone does not have a telephone and very few questions can be asked. Respondents may be vague with their answer and there can be error in communication. Now, the indirect oral interview. The investigator contacts third parties called as witness capable of supplying information. For example, inquiry regarding irregular business, fire accident, theft, etc. The correctness of the information depends on the following. People do not know the full information, ability of the interviewer and the honesty of the interviewer. It is suitable when direct information does not exist or direct source is not reliable. Only then you go for an indirect oral interview. Information from correspondents. So these are agents. They are correspondents who are appointed to collect data for you. Example, the newspaper agencies. Now going for the uses of it. It is cheap and appropriate for extensive investigation. Suitable, it is adopted when information is got at regular intervals from a wide area. So there it is suitable. Now for a mail questionnaire. So a questionnaire is prepared for the survey and this is sent by post. So questions pertaining to the survey is sent to the informant by post and a request is made along with a covering letter. So the covering letter will say that this particular questionnaire is sent for this purpose and you want them to fill it and send it back to you. Questionnaires can be classified on the following basis based on the degree of formalization or structure disguised or lack of disguise communication method on the degree of formalization or structure when a prescribed sequence of question is followed it is structured when there is no particular sequence it is non-structured when the objective is clear it is not disguised when the objective of the questionnaire is not clear it is disguised now for the merits of this questionnaire it can be easily adopted when the field of investigation is very big. Informants are spread over a wide geographical area, so it's cheap. You just send a questionnaire and you can get the answers. The limitations, it can't be adopted when the informants are illiterate. Uncertainty of response cannot be predicted. Information may not be correct, like you may just tick the first column for everything. So uh, the, there can be incorrect information, less burden to the respondent, postage stamp should be prepaid, sample should be large, you should send the questionnaire to many people, 
enquiry is needed to be when the response is not got you have to enquire and collect the information back risk of non response is eliminated suitability when informants are spread over wide area you use it schedules this is when you don't give a questionnaire for the higher officials you prepare an interview schedule and the enumerators get a reply to the questions and they fill it with their own handwriting especially to the top officials like the directors of a company and so on advantage you can also do this with illiterate informants and when there is very less response and also when the information received is more reliable and accurate you use this the limitations it is costly training is needed for the enumerators and the way in which the enumerators conduct the interview will affect the data collected suitability used for high rate or response due to contact now going on to what this questionnaire is again questionnaire is a media of communication between the investigator and the respondent questions pertaining to the survey is prepared and sent to various informants by post and a request is made through a covering letter so this is a questionnaire so now questions which are pertaining to your survey is enquired in the questionnaire and the types we have already seen now we have seen the merits as well so a recap of what the merits are now for the characteristics of a good questionnaire so when a questionnaire is sent it should have a covering letter the number of questions should not be too long it should not irritate the respondent so the number of questions should be less the questions should be logically arranged you cannot have uh, name of the candidate and uh, you cannot have uh, uh, the school studied and then the age and then uh, some other questions so there should be some logical sequencing questions should be short and simple to understand two big questions will be confusing for the respondent ambiguous questions vague questions should be avoided personal questions to be avoided instruction should be given how to answer whether you should tick it or whether you should shade it objective questions multiple choice questions is preferred open end questions if you need specific answers others they'll give a blank so that open end question may be asked yes or no question is preferred easy to tick yes or no question should look attractive questions requiring calculations you should avoid you can do the calculations pre testing the questionnaire so before the questionnaire is administered a pilot survey should be done a cross check should be done and method of tabulation to be finalized now going to the sources of secondary data secondary data is the second hand information as i already told you so you can have it from a published source or an unpublished source published source means it's already published unpublished source it is not published published data can be international publication by any international organization official publication by the central government the economic survey etc semi official publication by the panchayats etc reports of various committees and commissions of the government journals and newspapers like economic times the hindu etc publications of private institutes like chamber of commerce and so on unpublished source these records are maintained by government private offices research institutes but they are not meant for publication the data is collected but maintained but not published now the precaution in use of secondary data the investigator should take necessary precaution before using second hand information so it is done on the following basis suitable purpose of investigation the investigator must ensure that the data is suitable for the purpose of enquiry inadequate data adequacy of data is to be judged in the light of the requirement of the survey as well as the geographical area definition of units the investigator must ensure that the definition of units which are used by him are the same as in the earlier investigation degree of accuracy so you should bear in mind the degree of accuracy the time and condition of collection of facts 
so if you have sufficient time you can go in for primary data if not go for a secondary data comparison investigator should keep in mind whether the secondary data is reasonable consistent and comparable test checking the secondary data must be test checked before you use it for calculation homogeneous conditions it is not safe to take published statistics at their face value without knowing the mean values and limitations now for all this data collection we need to do it by sampling so we don't approach the entire population we actually take up a sample so we have various methods of sampling the simple random sampling the stratified random sampling multiple multi stage sampling cluster sampling and so on so we take a small sample size which is used for our data collection and analysis is done so this is for what statistics is actually so it is just the collection analysis and interpretation of data so with statistics we will be able to approach various fields especially the government policy making accounting and various other fields so thank you and have a happy and smart learning